Good. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll try to raise my voice a, a, a bit. Uh, I know you can hear me. Uh, so thank you. We have a little challenge to find the seats. I hope everyone is seated. Uh, there's still a few more empty chairs. So if you don't like the table, you can maybe move somewhere else. Uh, so good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Premisl Pala uh, from Sergi. I'll be the MC of the evening one, but also responsible for the selection of wine. So if you have any complaints or etc. So uh, turn it to me clearly. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, all of you for making the right choice to selecting the culinary dinner uh, this evening here compared to the mesh potato and turkey that our friends, uh, the next door, I'm uh, <laughs> uh, I bet, every year is very good. <laughs> uh, but I think the more proper welcome shall go something along the line uh, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests from academia, I think some from government, uh, dear friends of Search EI, it's my utmost pleasure and honor to welcome all of you here uh, this evening at this very special occasion uh, to mark and to celebrate Jan Schreiner's this year's uh, ISA Prize. <clears throat> uh, we have gathered here uh, at the brink of the 25th anniversary of Search EI uh, in this magnificent palace, uh, which is the seat of Search EI. And I see uh, quite a few analogies between this beautiful place and the man who had built it or let built uh, for him, uh, Mr. Shebek. Uh, Mr. Shebek has been quite accomplished uh, professional uh, as a builder, railroads, uh, railways. But besides the professional accomplishment, uh, he's been also a Renaissance man uh, with the ambition to help society at large through philanthropic activities, through supporting arts, and also education. Uh, and I do see a parallel here uh, with a man who has returned to his homeland, uh, the time flies by, so 26 years ago, uh, equipped with professional uh, acumen, uh, Western training, but I believe most importantly uh, with a vision, uh, enduring persuasion to build uh, economic institute, educational research. Uh, the center of excellence, which would be on a par and comparable with the best institutions around the globe. And at this point, I cannot think about a more suited person to expand on the previous words uh, than the co-founder of uh, Serge EI, also the former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Jan's personal friend, uh, Josef Jelenitz. So please let him welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to speak in such occasion. We celebrate prestigious prize for uh, Jan Schweiner, uh, and uh, I'm sure in a few, min in a few minutes, uh, Professor Zimmerman will speak about his academic excellence. But uh, I think it's impossible uh, to understand Jan's uh, academic achievements without saying a few words about the history of this institution. As was said, it's 25 years, but uh, I remember when I met Jan at summer 1988. It's 27 years, Jan, today. Uh, and um, it was in Vienna. This was the time uh, in which uh, 
uh, the communists started to lose the grip over society. And one of the results of this development was that I was allowed to, for the first time in my professional life, to take part in the conference outside of the communist bloc. Uh, with Jan, we spent a lot of time speaking about the future of um, economics in communist bloc, possible scenarios of the future development. So it's um, natural that uh, after the Velvet Revolution, Jan arrived in Prague, I think, in two or six weeks uh, after the change of the government. And from the very beginning, uh, we started discussions not only about transformation, which was the biggest challenge for any economist here, but also about the reform of the economic research and education. Um, it was the Jan's idea to start thinking about the new institution, uh, not reform of the some old one. Most of you are academicians. You know that the most conservative institutions in Europe is not the Catholic Church, but the universities. That's uh, the simple fact. Sometimes it's very positive, but at that moment, we realized that we have to establish the Green Grass pro uh, Project. The uh, Jan's vision from the very beginning was crucial for the final result. We prepared proposal for Charles University and for the Mellon Foundation at that time. I don't know if the copy of this exists in archives of search today, but I'm sure that if we have a chance to compare this proposal with the current with the current institution, we discover that uh, our dream uh, really uh, comes true. But um, the beginnings were challenging. Uh, the main ideas was connected with, at that time, totally strange and quite often unacceptable um, proposals to create institution which uh, would be devoted to the education and research at the same time. The separation between education and research was almost standard at the time. The overlap was with minimal. Um, and um, to convince um, the decision makers at the time about this idea was big, big challenge. It had to be English-speaking institution for uh, for this simple reason. We had to connect our economic community with the mainstream uh, research in the economics. Uh, we had to invite people to teach here. Um, but the English-speaking institution uh, in this environment was another utopian idea. We, as Semestel said, from the very beginning stressed the top um, world excellence. It was Jan's uh, firm decision to look at the top. Um, you know, the economic research here, the economy as a, uh, economics as a such was in very bad conditions. Big parts of the, uh, uh, the research was ideologically biased. 
it was simple instrument of uh, propaganda at the time and uh, ideological indoctrination. So we had to find a way how to separate the people who, who worked in the real economics and how to create plat platform for them. The situation was the same uh, in the whole former uh, Soviet bloc. And um, the Jan from the very beginning insisted that this institution should be open to the all countries of the former Soviet bloc. Because the, the lack of, uh, the, the problem was the same in all these countries. There were no well-trained economists. We could start economic reforms. We could start a discussion about future of uh, our, uh, our economy, but uh, there were no people. Uh, so this was established as one of the crucial missions of this, uh, of this institution. And um, policy-oriented institution, not only basic research, but also um, economic policy. This was the big challenge, transition. Um, economics uh, of transition was not existed the discipline at the time. Uh, but it was extremely important. Uh, so this was the set of um, ideas connected with uh, the vision of uh, um, Center for the Economic Research and the Graduate Education. You know, it looked totally utopian. Uh, for Jan, it, it, was, uh, it was absolutely normal that this was the framework for the future institution. For me, it looked like a dream. But um, thanks to uh, Jan's intensive um, activity, but uh, also thanks to his uh, international uh, reputation, his personality, friendly personality, and uh, his um, diplomatic skill. Uh, this institution was finally established. So we can now celebrate uh, not only Jan's achievement, but also the 25th uh, anniversary uh, of the search EI. So Jan, thank you and congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it, at the end of a very lovely day with a very uh, productive exchange of views, uh, uh, value with value in its own, but also with reference to our uh, great uh, man of the day. Uh, yeah, I have to end with a few words. Uh, uh, of course, this is not the ICA prize uh, ceremony, yes, because this was only in June on a lovely boat. Uh, uh, in Bonn with hundreds of uh, people of a big conference uh, present, but we thought it's a good idea because uh, we ha had no chance to do that in the summer to collect uh, a number of friends and academic partners of Jan to mark the event uh, better. Uh, we thought it's a very wonderful idea to, to, to consider to go to Prague and uh, Serge I was immediately arguing that that's a, that's a great idea because uh, we have the 25th anniversary, so this is uh, this is the perfect fit. So I'm very, I feel very uh, selected, honored, uh, pleased, or whatever as IZA directors that we are here in this this evening. Um, well, um, uh, this is uh, I don't know how, the, how many prizes we have given, but I only mentioned this. Uh, this afternoon, the first prize winner in 2002 was uh, was uh, Jacob Minzer, um, who 
died too early, uh, who never got the Nobel Prize, which I think he should have gotten. Uh, he, uh, he was the, f the, the, the creator of uh, this big area, what we call nowadays labor economics, which was not so much existing uh, before. Um, well, the, he, he gave, so to speak, the, the, the message to us, empirically oriented, uh, but uh, very, very basically um, uh, in academic research. Um, so, um, uh, so, so we have had a number of prize winners since then. Well, some of them got the Nobel Prize. Uh, another prize winner is here, Alan Kirker, uh, together with David Card. So we are very proud of this uh, series. And uh, it was very clear that it was only unclear when it was <laughs> that one day uh, Jan had had to get it. Uh, for many years, you have been also uh, serving as a member of the prize uh, committee. And um, well, sometime we had to leave that committee. Um, <laughs> okay, now yeah. So I'm. Uh, I think for for uh, ICA is a European-based uh, institution, but we are, feel ourselves global. We are very multi-ethnic. We have 24. At one time, you said that today we had about 24 uh, uh, people from different nations as uh, staff members. Uh, so we are very global. A platform. Uh, we, are, we are thinking it's very relevant to honor important areas uh, and, and contributions uh, in various fields. So, the so transition economics uh, is, is was close to us, uh, uh, also because we have one of our program areas is transition economics. And as I mentioned already, uh, that uh, Hartmut Lehmann, the program director of the area. Also, he is also here. We are really pushing for that field also. So um, it was important to have that, and there was nobody better who has done that. Uh, it was by far um, clear. Um, uh, but I have to be honest. I mean, I, I, of course, you never talk about what, what the debate in the committee is, and uh, whatever I say now is completely lying. I mean, lying, I'm making things up. <laughs> but but, uh, but, but uh, uh, it was... It was it, we were not going for the field as such, yes, so I should make this clear. Um, maybe that would be a misinterpretation. Uh, we, we had a number of very good candidates and, uh, and we had uh, to make, unfortunately, a decision. And um, it was a clear one that we, and it was good in, in the sense that it also meets with uh, the transition area where we want to be strong. It's a very important case. So it was very clear that Jan, uh, was, would be the one, and I'm very happy that we, we made this decision. Yes, as it was already made clear through the day, um, uh, from the early days, when the breakdown of uh, the Eastern system was uh, was clear, he, was, he had the instinct, um, and uh, the, also, of course, the ambition and uh, the entrepreneurial skills, uh, but this all has to come together, yes. To, to come to, to a place which uh, has potential, but uh, you have to have the ingredients, you have to meet the partners locally here. Uh, it's not easy, you, ha you have, to ma have, have to have a match, yes? Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm not sure if you have a statistic, run around and find this out, in how many other countries people like you arrived, uh, but I, I'm not aware of, of any kind of similar model uh, anywhere in in any of the transition countries where we have something very similar. So uh, certainly there's a supply problem. You need a person who uh, has the energy. But also there has to be a demand problem. There have to, have to be a local community the person can convince of. And I would say uh, the Czech public has to be, or is, should be, very happy and lucky uh, to have had Jan at that time to have the instinct to do so. Because I would wish, if I may say that, uh, that also other countries in Eastern Europe uh, would have something similar, uh, because we still uh, could have uh, stronger voices uh, in Europe, in other countries, in the European debate, in, a, in the academic scene, and uh, in uh, also in the policy arena. Yes, because the secret, that's, that's why it's very important that he has, from the beginning, had this connection, policy, and research. Uh, because uh, that is what, uh, what the U.S. makes strong, that there is this close connection between uh, super academic researchers at the one side and the policy decisions. This was the tradition, also in my country, was not, was not normal. Uh, nowadays, it's much better. The chief economic advisor 
of, of Chancellor Merkel is, 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 a, is an excellent colleague, educated, by the way, at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, so just to, to, to make a comparison, so, so there is some, but I don't see many, many similar things, and we should have had more, and so, so Serge and, and, and Jan Svena remains kind of a role model for, for transition countries, uh, for the, and I think uh, uh, this is, uh, I think, kind of open invitation uh, also to other countries to maybe not copy ICA as I heard <laughs> today, but uh, copy, um, <laughs> I prefer copy search, I, yeah, um, uh, instead of ICA. I'm, uh, sorry, no, I, I appreciate your, your remark, but uh, I'm, I'm saying that I think we need strong partners and uh, uh, to, to build this up in, uh, also to, to focus on, glo uh, on a globalized world, uh, that globalization. Uh, international exchange is, is, is very, very important. Now, I don't want to go into details of all your publications and, and so on that we had we have done uh, in length uh, in, um, in, in, uh, in, 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 in in Bonn, yeah, and you, we can all read it. I am I'm, I'm happy that you, we have such a distinguished crowd tonight, and we can celebrate again uh, and reconfirm uh, the big achievements uh, and, and Prize uh, to, to Jan and uh, I. Uh, um, Jan brought me back, so to speak, uh, <laughs> the medal, and um, um, uh, he's, he, we have. So I ha we have to give it to him again to, to, <laughs> to make to make sure that he really accepts it, and uh, we have to to, uh, to applaud uh, to the big achievements and 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 uh, and to to the party to the rest of the evening. Thank you very much. Basically, I should say there are two things. People don't believe there's a backside of this kind of thing, which is big, which you can to put into your office, and probably it's in your I office. Have it in my uh, office huge. It's huge, yes. and it, you cannot carry it. Uh, <laughs> this is for for, 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 the, for the world, so to speak. But this is gold or whatever. Yes. So, <laughs> this is the metal. Okay. Okay, let's look at him, and uh, you enjoy uh, looking at us. Okay, okay great. Okay, great. This time better, yes, and uh, the last time. <laughs> Very good. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Now, thank I think you. I know you want to I'll, say, I'll say a few words. So, so I'll, I'll start with, you know, I, I thought this is wonderful to be the 14th recipient of this prize, and uh, since I'm far from Sergi, I'm at Columbia, and it's a pleasure that uh, Jacob Minster was at Columbia, and uh, so the prize goes back to Columbia in a way, right? But I thought, you know, you should do something special, namely get the prize twice. So I'm the first one who gets it twice, because I got it in Bonn and I got it again now. So I studied innovation, so this is part of uh, application of the field. Uh, but, you know, it's actually interesting with Jacob Minzer, because um, I was once giving a talk at Columbia. This is long before uh, all this happened, actually. And um, uh, so I give the talk and, you know, normal discussion. And afterwards, Jacob Minzer, who, for those of you who didn't know him, was, you know, uh, tough guy in, in seminar and everything, but he came and he was, you know, very moved, and I was wondering what was happening, and he pulled out of his pocket his student ID from Brno, which is uh, an important city in the uh, eastern part of the country, where he studied from 1938 to 39 as he was escaping from Hitler, and he got a temporary asylum in, in the Czech, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, and uh, and he says, you know, this was really important for me and uh, for several reasons, obviously, escaping, getting into the new world and all that. But he says, you know, that's where I learned the math that I use in deriving the human capital model. So, <laughs> so a few years later, I was getting an honorary degree in Brno at the Technical University. And uh, I was giving uh, my talk and I said, but you know, you guys, you have some famous alumni, you know, like Jacob Minzer, whom you taught the mathematics that led to a development of a field of economics. So they didn't know it, of course, but they noted it and now probably they have it in their archive and have him on display. So I thought, I thought that was very good. But, you know, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very moved by uh, receiving the prize. I'd like to thank you, Klaus, and the committee and everything. It's, um, you know, a wonderful thing. I, of course, didn't expect it. I'd like to thank all of you for coming here. And, uh, and I, I really think that the prize is, um, I appreciate it, it's a prize to me, but I think it's a prize to the uh, entire field of people who worked on economics of transition, 
uh, and I think that's you know been a very important accomplishment for that. I think within ISA, of course, as I said, Hartmut Lehmann reached the group that uh, deals with that, and uh, and I think it's a it's a prize that uh, Sergi I should be proud of. It's obviously a prize for Sergi I. And Josef Zelenets gave you uh, some of the key sort of moments of how we were starting this institution. And it's true that you know, actually no other country in the region has done that. Uh, either there was an attempt that failed or there was a, no attempt or no serious attempt. And in some sense, we didn't know whether we would succeed. We just knew we were the right tandem to do it. Josef really knew the situation here, as he described to you, and uh, how utopic it looked, utopian it looked, that uh, we might do something like that. I knew a little bit the situation among the foundations, and we went to the foundations with the proposal, and, uh, and they said, this is incredible, this is so costly, you know, this can't be done. And we said, no, but you have to do it, because uh, this part of the world needs to do it. So they said, well, look, we'll finance one. We're not, we're not going to do one in each country. I mean, you have to decide where you're going to locate it, Warsaw, Prague, Budapest, you know, whatever. But uh, it's going to be just one of them. And uh, so we examined the terrain to see where, where it could be. We really did the due diligence. And in the end, we decided to start with Charles University. It had a very progressive uh, rector, you know, president of the university, Radim Palos, who unfortunately passed away earlier uh, this year. He was a dissident, a philosopher, and uh, when we came to him, I still remember, he said, well, this sounds good, but, you know, is economics a science? And we were looking at him, and, uh, you know, the spur of the moment, you sort of blurt out, well, you know, we have theories, we test hypotheses. He said, oh, okay, that's, that's fine. <laughs> so I've... He says, I've just abolished the Institute of Marxism-Leninism, so, you know, you take over the here. And, so, you know, we had these temporary headquarters, you know, we were camping and starting everything. So it was, it was quite, a, quite a, you know, uh, journey that we, that we had from then on. It just went on and, uh, and really was quite pioneering. From the standpoint of students, Daniel Munich and some others, Krasimir Zsigic, were in the first, you know, years and, and they had no upperclassmen, right? So imagine that they had no idea what they were getting into. It was utopian, as I've said, so they hard to imagine that what they were studying and also, you know, what's going to happen? What is the second year? What's the third year? What is it all about? You know, it's just so different from, uh, 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 from anything else. Uh, Christina Lenkova was, you know, working uh, with us. So I remember we brought some students. We had some um, um, uh, contract. We were doing some research and graduate students from Yale came for the summer and Michigan, I think, as well. And the students here were just so excited that they were learning the same thing. That it was kind of validation to them that this really made sense. This is really what the students in America are learning. So it was it was actually tremendous, and you know we had to fight step by step. And uh, and I think it was really important to be a president of the academy, uh, Professor Drahos here. You know, one one and a half year into the project, the Academy of Sciences came to us, and and notice it was uh, the physicists, the chemists, the biologists, the mathematicians, uh, and we have also a professor here, yeah, right here you are, mathematics, who came to us and said, look, we've looked at you and Serge, could you start something like that for us, for the academy? We'd like to abolish the old institutes that, as Josef Zelen has described, really were uh, not doing too much of economic science, and could you start it? And I remember our first reaction was, we are so overwhelmed, we can't do it. Uh, we had, you know, so much to do just with Serge. But the academy persevered, the physicists, mathematicians, chemists uh, persevered, and, uh, and we in the end agreed that we would create a joint workplace, that we would do the same thing, that we really, in order to make it be a, a world-class institution, we needed a larger scale. And that's how Serge-EI got born, with EI being the Economics Institute of the Academy of Sciences. So it was actually the far-sightedness of uh, the colleagues in the natural sciences and mathematics who understood at the time the importance of this, that we started. I mean, our challenge now is to reach the scale where we are at the minimum efficient scale. We are below that, but uh, but you know that's how that's how it started. So uh, just a couple a couple other things I think that are important in the history of this. So first of all, uh, Alan Kruger, who is here, uh, suffered as he already uh, mentioned. Uh, his uh, first year at Cornell as an undergraduate freshman, he took this microeconomics class from somebody, namely me, who was fresh from graduate school. In those days, we didn't learn at all how to teach. We were learning how to do research. 
So I suspect that half of the class I was talking into the wall because I was totally uh, uh, frazzled. There was five. There were 500 students, you know, ranging from the mathematicians and the engineers. It was a compulsory subject to the poets, right? And you had no idea how to calibrate this so that all of them would be satisfied. So, so I think it's a tribute to Alan that he actually survived and became an economist despite this thing. <laughs> And, and then I have a you know, really great story with Hank Farber. Uh, we were both um, you know, graduate students at Princeton. We came from Cornell. He was already doing a master's degree. I was doing my uh, bachelor's degree. And uh, we were driving for a while between uh, Cornell and Princeton. And uh, at one point, uh, you know, we had early in the morning, I think it was, we were driving foggy you know, through New Jersey going up to New York and um, passing a, a truck and suddenly Another big truck is coming our way, but Hank, you know, alert, perfect instincts, managed at the last fraction of a second to pull over, and we realized that we were going to make history because we survived. So it was uh, very good. So here we are with Sergei, Hank on the Executive Supervisory Committee, me in the position that I am, and I think this institution has no other way to go but up. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs>